What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla, Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. And break down what's going on with the market this far. You should be watching for as we approach tomorrow. What's happening with the economic calendar and the earnings affecting us. And what my price predictions are as time progresses. But before I break into all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and the offer ends very, very soon. Anyways, now let's break down what's happening to the market. Looking at SPY, we have some very, very interesting price action right here. Basically, SPY started off in a very, very nice consolidation trend, especially for yesterday. Then we got this breakout, the same thing we were expecting yesterday above this 496 level. And I told you if we broke this, we could be pushing all the way up towards 498. That's where we basically went to and we kind of consolidated up here. Now we're going to be watching to see if we can break out even higher. So, so far, the market is favoring the bulls. We're seeing so many buyers stepping in. We're going to be watching to see if we can continue this trend from this point on. I'll be breaking down more details about the charts in just a couple of minutes. Let's first talk about something else. So right now, we just had PayPal and Disney announce their earnings, and things are very mixed between them. So PayPal is the one that dropped because their guidance was not the strongest. They issued disappointing guidance despite the fact that they beat on earnings. And you can see it right over here. EPS was a beat very, very well for them, and revenue was a beat for them. But... Their guidance, not the best. They provided guidance for the full year and the first quarter. And basically, that fell just short of expectations. The company anticipates a full year earnings of $5.10 per share, below the $5.48 that analysts expected. It's not the best of news for PayPal causing a sell-off. However, Disney, on the other hand, was different. Disney beat earnings estimates, and it also hiked guidance as it's slashing streaming losses, which is good news for them. Disney basically did relatively well. They announced it's going to take a $1.5 billion stake in Fortnite Studio Epic Games, launching its flagship ESPN streaming service in fall 2025. That is good news for them. And on top of this, they also announced that their EPS was a beat. Revenue was uh, very close to expectations, but their guidance was quite strong above expectations. And this helped Disney push even more. Now, don't forget that their Disney Plus core subscribers is not the strongest, but because guidance was quite strong and we got some new announcements for ESPN Plus, that is good news for them. So that's good news for Disney. This is bullish overall, especially thanks to strong guidance. Anyways, that's pretty much it for now in terms of earnings. Uh, for tomorrow, just as a reminder, uh, we don't really have much coming out for tomorrow. We just have like Cameco, Spirit, Hershey, and just a few others before the market opens, then Pinterest and a few others after market close. So minor earnings for tomorrow, nothing too crazy. What about the economic data? In the morning, we have Barkin from the Fed giving a speech. Then we have initial jobs claims an hour before the market opens. After that, everything else is very minor. We have some bill auctions coming out at 11.30 a.m., not to mention uh, you know, the WASTE report and then Barkin later on afternoon. It's all very, very minor data, nothing too crazy. Now, look, <laughs> excuse me, guys, I apologize. Uh, looking at this chart right over here, which shows the Hawk and Dove scale, you will notice that Barkin is known for being kind of in the middle, not too hawkish, not too dovish, just in the middle. So I don't really expect much to happen based off that. But there is one thing I want to warn you guys about. The fear and greed index is hitting extreme greed again. When this happens, this is when you want to become a lot more cautious in the markets. So this tends to tell us the market has a top coming very soon. And I think that's going to likely be the case. I don't think the market's done yet. I think the market could still go a little higher. But I do believe a top is going to be forming. Market momentum is currently at extreme greed. So be a little bit careful considering that. On top of this, I just want to call out that uh, the puts and call options are still at extreme greed. This tends to happen when the market's in that topping process, not to mention market volatility. The VIX right now is actually below. It fell below the 50 daily moving average, which is giving the bulls a bigger edge. So we're going to be watching to see when the VIX bottoms. I don't think it's bottomed yet. It could even drop a little bit more. And the market might pump a little bit more thanks to that. So now let's talk about the charts. How are things looking? The answer is bullish on SPY. This chart is clearly bullish. But it does look like it might retrace just a little bit. So we're going to be looking for a little retracement followed by a bounce. And I find that to be very probable. So I think tomorrow, SPY is going to retrace just a little bit. We're going to come back down, maybe not all the way down to 496, maybe like 496.5 or even like 497 flat. I think it's going to come back down to test, grab liquidity down here. 
And I think that however low it goes, it's not going to be that bad. It'll just retrace the points to a point and a half from this peak right here. So we could be testing 497 tomorrow, maybe even 496.5, then make an attempt to bounce off that level and push back up to 498. And then I think that either at the end of the day tomorrow, if not by Friday, there might be one more push towards 500. I think that the market could have one more pump coming before we form some kind of top and i think that spy is not done quite yet so that's my best prediction uh to be bullish make sure you watch 498 if we continue to hold above that our next target could be 499 uh, the highest from yesterday then 499 technically then 500 above that those are three major or three significant resistance levels which are worth noting for support make sure you watch 497 496.5 which is very minor 496 and 494 I think that SPY might retrace towards 497, if not 496.5 temporarily tomorrow. Get a very sideways price action day. Be red for some time, and then at the end of the day, we might see a pump. And we'll see if we get a big breakout either tomorrow or Friday for the final pump. I'll be watching that very, very carefully. What about for Tesla? How is Tesla looking? Tesla was holding up very nicely today. Uh, we basically pumped in the morning, came back down because we got some news that SPY, uh, that SPY in the market and also Tesla reacted kind of negative to before we saw Tesla bounce back up. Now <laughs> it's actually closing very close to about 187. So I think that we're kind of, we have this new range that was established. I think tomorrow Tesla's going to retrace a little bit, but the markets, we could be looking for more liquidity to be grabbed over here at these levels. We're going to be watching 182.5 to 184. We might see Tesla grab liquidity here, then balance, just trade sideways as time goes on. Watch resistance in this zone. And if we break above 190, we turn bullish. If we lose 184, we could turn a little bit more bearish and retest 182. If we lose that, we turn even more bearish. I don't think it's going to pan out like that. I think we might retrace a little bit, then bounce, and then get another sideways day and close kind of flat. But later on, we could see Tesla push a lot higher since we have an inverse head and shoulders like structure right here. We could see a potential breakout, so it might come down and start to break out later. Either at the end of the day, tomorrow, or by Friday, we might see Tesla try to push to even higher levels. So I'm seeing an inverse head and shoulders like setup, but I think that Tesla might retrace first, trade sideways, and start to break out at the end of the day on Thursday, if not by Friday. That's what I'm predicting so far. The QQQ is looking stronger than SPY because at the end of the day, we're starting to pump harder. I told you if we broke above 430, watch 432. That's exactly where the QQQ has been consolidating. If we break that, 434 is going to be our next target. Now, for tomorrow, you can see this yellow trend line right over here. I think there's a very good chance we could retrace and end up just like retesting this trend line. And if we do end up doing so, we could try to bounce off of this. So look for a little retracement that's coming into the 431s. Could go, go a little bit lower if we lose that back down to 430. But either 431 or 430 might be tested in a bounce back up. Sideways price action. We could see one more push a little bit higher either at the end of the day, if not by Friday. NVIDIA is looking pretty strong, so it looks like it might help the QQQ. But we're at resistance. We're just trying to hold above uh this resistance right here i think this is going to form kind of like a cup and handle that's what i'm predicting it might form this cup and come back down just a little bit this can all happen within a day and get one more push as we approach the end of the day on thursday if not by friday so i think a cup and handle is forming on nvidia that's what i would predict and we're going to be looking for this thing to try to continue pushing helping the qqq i think it might retrace back into this zone right over here Retrace just a little bit back to 700, if not 692. And that's going to drag the QQQ down tomorrow morning. That's my prediction. And then we're going to get a bounce on NVIDIA. It's going to push back up. I think this is going to help the market bounce later on during the day on Thursday, if not by Friday. So that's what I'm predicting for NVIDIA. And then for Apple, I think that Apple has a very similar trend. Apple's kind of consolidating at 189. To be bullish, you want to break 190.5. To be bearish, you want to lose 188. Right now, we have a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure. And this is basically looking bullish. It looks like Apple could push even higher. So we're going to be looking to see this left shoulder here, this head down here, then a right shoulder that's forming. We're going to be looking for a bounce towards 190 as time goes on. Uh, first, we might sell off a little bit because you can see Apple's getting hit with some resistance. So we might get an initial sell off towards 188 tomorrow. But Apple might try to balance right there. So watch and see if you hold that 188 support. That's going to be a big support for us. I think we might test and we'll see if we bounce off that and push up higher. If we lose it, we could be establishing kind of like a head and shoulders. We have this left shoulder here, you know, the head up here. So we'll watch and see if we kind of retrace a little bit and try to balance here. So watch that very carefully for tomorrow. 
I think Apple could come down and balance, and we'll see if we could eventually make our way back up. So look for that, guys. That's what I'm seeing, at least for Apple for the time being. The trend is still bullish. Apple has not officially like broken out just yet. It is showing some weakness, though, because of the, the way it grabbed liquidity here. They could be getting us ready for like a little retracement, but Apple could still bounce later. It does not mean I'm a big bear on Apple. It just means that temporarily that's what we're seeing. We can even draw out like a support trend line like this uh, just temporarily just to see how this is like essentially looking. Uh, so we'll see how Apple does. I just want to note Apple's still very resilient relative to other stocks out there. Not looking that bad. Uh, with that being said, let's now switch over to some other stocks out there. Looking back at the main ones I typically go over, things are not looking that bad. Spy definitely has potential. We could retrace first and then break out later. Rivian's looking a little bit weak right now. We might see this retrace towards 15 flats and then try to bounce again. So watch us see if you form kind of like a double bottom. 15 might be coming and then a bounce after that. So if I tried to pump and got a rejection off the 50 EMA, I told everyone to watch and see if we get a rejection or not. So if I was showing some life, instead we rejected right now. So we're going to be watching to see if this thing retraces towards 7.57. So far it's losing some momentum, so it might retrace towards 7.4 and 7.57 for now. For the IWM, this is kind of rejecting off the 50 EMA. We're going to be watching to see if we hold 192.65. If we lose this, a bigger drop is coming. So watch that very, very carefully. Uh, but watch it for a test of 192. If we lose that, we're going to be dropping down towards uh, 191.68 and 190. For Microsoft, we're still holding up very nicely. We were talking about how this thing had a range. I told you whichever way it breaks is what we're going to be looking for. And we have a nice uptrend on Microsoft. Uh, I'm going to be looking for a back test of this breakout area tomorrow at 411, then a balance towards uh, higher levels. So I think it might retrace towards 411 tomorrow. And then we might see a bounce and a sideways day, at least for tomorrow is most likely because we're kind of rejecting right here. For AMD, AMD is looking pretty good right now. Bullish, but we have to break above resistance at 171. If we break 171.5, uh, it's going to push up towards this uh, imbalance up here towards 173, then 175. So let's break 171.5. If we do that tomorrow, we're going to be looking for more upside. If you reject here, we're going to retrace back down towards 168. So we'll see if we reject or break. It does have potential to break. So watch it very carefully. For SPX, I mean, we're approaching that 5,000 psychological level. Uh, we basically touched 5,000. We might reject a little bit at first, uh, but then we could still bounce later on. So we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. We're still on a very, very strong uptrend. We're not ready to reverse yet. And we'll just have to wait and see when that actually starts. For uh, the dollar index, I'm going to talk about the dollar and the VIX. This is continuing to reject. Uh, we're going to be watching to see if we could hold 104. If we lose that, 103.8 is coming. We're looking a little bearish, so we'll just have to see how it looks. So far, nothing too bad has happened. This is still on a downtrend, which is still favoring the bulls for the stock market. The VIX lost support at the 50 EMA, and it looks to me like it's going to be testing 12.4 very soon. So it's looking kind of weak. This suggests that the market may have more upside soon. So the VIX does not look like it's done selling off yet. I do think the VIX will bounce later, but we're not ready yet. Coinbase has flipped. We actually got a nice bounce right here. I think that we're going to test 125.7 tomorrow on Coinbase. If we break this, look for a push towards this imbalance at 130. But overall, the chart is looking quite bullish. For Google, we're above the 50 EMA. It's showing some life. We have this gap to fill this imbalance up here towards 153. I think that this thing might slowly creep up towards 150, then eventually 153. The chart is still looking bullish to me. For Amazon, Amazon, like, like we said yesterday, we're going to be watching for this test at this 20 EMA. We came a little short. We almost tested, but we just didn't quite get there. So it basically bounced off 160, 167.5 is where it bounced. But the EMA would have been around like 167. So it was off by just like pennies, guys. It wasn't that far off. So it is trying to rebound here. I thought it would like test this and then bounce. It came very close. Now Amazon is showing some life. So we're going to be watching to see if Amazon can try to consolidate here. I think it's just going to consolidate in this 170 range since we're holding above our EMA. Watch 168 is key support. If we lose that, we turn bearish, but we haven't done so yet. Might consolidate and try to balance from here. So it's looking pretty good. And push up towards 172.5. Meta, I told you we might test the, this EMA. See, we hit 451. The EMA was at 449. Uh, so it was off by just a few dollars before it got the balance. So we were very close. It was just a little early. 
So with that being said, since Meta already got that bounce, uh, this thing is holding up nicely. We're going to be looking for a back test of 470 and some sideways price action around there. And this thing could still push up later on. So there's still some life there. So with that being said, I anticipate that we might see a little retracement on SPY in the market tomorrow, but we might get bought back up as time goes on. And there could be another pump coming to SPY later. So that's what I'm seeing for tomorrow. That's my prediction. Please have a great day. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys very, very soon on the next one uh, tomorrow morning. So have a great day, guys. Take care. Uh, take it easy. I know the market could be very stressful sometimes, so try to do what you can to relieve stress. And once again, never give up. Keep your heads up no matter what. And I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow. The market to the moon because the long term is very bright. Thank you all for listening again. And peace out.